Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be breaking down the Packers victory over the LA Rams on Monday Night Football which I did stream my play-by-play -play commentary and reaction to for the first time on this channel so I was quite happy with that. And the Packers, we were able to get the victory 24-12 over the Rams, keeping our playoff hopes alive. The Packers are not dead yet. So let's go ahead and go score by score to begin with, and then we'll go over stats as well. Let's see here. <clears throat> Things got started off pretty slowly in this game with the Packers scoring a 34-yard field goal on our first try to get a 3-0 lead by Mason Crosby, and then later on, Matt Gay hit a 33-yarder to get a 3-3 tie between the Rams and the Packers. With 4.26 left in the second quarter, A.J. Dillon had an 8-yard run where he just kept turning those big old thunder thighs to get another Packers touchdown to make it a 10-3 affair. Matt Gay, then with less than a minute left on the clock, hit a 55-yard field goal attempt for a halftime score of 10 to 6. Then the third quarter had the remaining of remainder of the scoring. AJ Dillon was able to get a 1-yard touchdown run to make it a 17 to 6 game for the Packers and then Aaron Jones with about two and a half minutes left on the clock in the third quarter had a 7-yard pass from Rodgers to make it a 24-6 game and then with 22 seconds left in the third Tyler Higby had an 8-yard touchdown catch from Baker Mayfield and they missed the extra point to get to the final score 24 to 12 with the fourth quarter kind of being a sloppy affair in the beginning and then the Packers is getting the ball and completely running out the clock with a long long drive that began with like eight and a half minutes left in the quarter stats for the game Aaron Rodgers had a pretty Pretty efficient game with 22 of 30 for 229 yards. One touchdown, one really bad interception where he kind of floated a ball that was supposed to go to Alan Lazard, who was wide open on that play, by the way. So, just saying. But, had took the care of the ball well. Had three, got sacked three times, though, so not necessarily the greatest <laughs> ever. A couple of them were really bad positions on, that caused it to either take a field goal or to punt the ball away. But the running game was really solid this game as well. Aaron Jones had a big game, 17 carries for 90 yards. A.J. Dillon, 11 for 36 and two touchdowns. Unfortunately, he was knocked out in the second half of the game with concussion protocol procedures. Hopefully, there's nothing too severe to doing out of precaution for him. And... Hopefully he'll be back next week against the Dolphins, who we really need in that game. Patrick Taylor just got signed back from the practice squad. Four carries for 15 yards, mainly on the last drive and just running out the clock. And in total, we had 35 attempts for 138 yards, about four yards per pop, and two touchdowns. Receiving, Romeo Dobbs came back off of IR for the first time in a long time. Led us in receptions for five for 55 yards. Christian Watson was heating up in the second half at four receptions for 46 yards. Aaron Jones, four for 36 and a touchdown. Dylan, three for 35. Cobb, three for 32. So the Packers on offense were able to really move the ball pretty well. So offense was good. Just had a couple of mistakes here and there that cost us some points, like taking bad sacks, the interception by Rodgers. Aaron Jones had a fumble that was honestly a really good play by Jalen Ramsey to strip that ball out, but that play was a little confusing because other plays like it have been blown dead by the referees this week, and yet this one wasn't, so it was kind of like frustrating as a fan. Like I'm not complaining about necessarily the call, complain about the consistency of things happening, and that's been the big thing with the refs. Each crew does things so inconsistent from one another, you never know what you're going to get. Defense actually played pretty well. We had five sacks on Baker Mayfield. Preston Smith had two sacks. Kingsley and Agbare had a really good game, had his third sack of the year. 
Quay Walker was all over, had a sack and a forced fumble, which was really, really good. Let's see here. Uh, Justin Hollins and Devontae Wyatt combined for half a sack. Rasul Douglas had eight tackles. Quay Walker had five tackles total. Preston Smith, two tackles for a loss. The defense was able to really make the Rams' offense kind of ineffective and inefficient, which is a very, very good thing. We also had an interception of Baker Mayfield. Rasul Douglas got an interception, but randomly decided to try to lateral the ball, almost caused a fumble. Thankfully, we had um, Adrian Amos there to recover it, so that was good. But one thing I also really want to highlight is our special teams, and especially Keyshawn Nixon, who ever since he became the full-time returner has been absolutely incredible. Why was he not the return man from the beginning? Seriously. He had three kick returns that counted for 95 yards, average of 31.7 with a 52-yard long return. He also had another like 40-yard return that was called back due to a ticky-tack holding call on the Packers. So he has been absolutely incredible. Had two punt returns for 36 yards, average of 18, which was really, really good. I'm going to quickly go over some of the Rams stats. Mayfield, 12 for 21, 111 yards, one touchdown, one pick, five sacks. Cam Akers running was a leading rusher and receiver for the Rams. Had 12 carries for 65 yards and three receptions for 35 yards in the air. Uh, Mayfield had a fumble. So that was really bad. Let's see here. Uh, Greg Gaines had a sack. Leonard Foy really took it to Josh Neiman this game for two sacks. But not really too much going on for the Rams there, so... Yeah, the Packers were able to eliminate the Rams from playoff contention, and we are still alive in the playoff hunt. But we got three really tough games ahead. Starting next week with the Miami Dolphins on Christmas Day in Miami. This is going to be a tough one because I don't trust our defense that plays a Fangio zone-heavy defense against Tua who is really good in a short game so it's going to be interesting to see if Joe Barry does anything different or he's just going to be stubborn and stick to what he thinks works which obviously does not but that's besides the point and we still need some help to get in the playoffs so we need the Seahawks to lose one more game and the Commanders to lose two games and us to win out for us to make the playoffs which it's a tall task, but we take it one week at a time. Let me know what you guys think about this game down in the comments below. And as always, I'll be here to break down Green Bay Packers.